In this video, we will examine some instructional models that can be used for the concurrent classroom, but that can also be used in a traditional classroom setting as well as a full distance learning environment. So whatever your current learning landscape looks like, I hope this video will give you helpful tools. In researching this topic, I gathered resources from several amazing people, which I have linked in the video description. But many of the ideas are from Catlin Tucker who has been doing amazing work with blended learning for many years and has adapted many of her ideas to help teachers during this pandemic. I'm grateful to her for, her, for sharing her work with us. Make sure to check out her website linked in the video description. You can find her blog, which includes many free resources. You can even purchase her books and sign up for her online courses. Yes, this was a Catlin Tucker ad. She deserves it. This quote from Catlin is super important. Teachers are not in the current situation by choice. We don't like it, but we're trying to do our best for our students, whether we are in a trad traditional classroom setting, doing full distance learning, or perhaps most challenging in a concurrent classroom situation. If you have some students face-to-face -face in your classroom and other students joining you on Zoom or in Google Meet, Catlin describes this as a concurrent classroom. I love this quote. The affordances of each learning landscape in person and online are not being leveraged. I did have to look up the meaning of the word affordance. So here is the definition. The quality or property of an object that defines its possible uses or makes clear how it can or should be used. There are qualities of face-to-face -face teaching and qualities of online teaching that are uniquely powerful that should be used in each learning landscape. This is an example of how we can leverage affordances in two types of learning landscapes. In the past several months, we have come to appreciate human interaction as one of the greatest advantages of teaching in a traditional classroom setting. Now, when, there, when this is so limited, we must leverage this benefit and provide ample strategic opportunities for human interaction when we are in the classroom. Interaction in small groups is one of the most strategic opportunities we can provide. If we do distance learning lessons well, I believe this is one of the greatest affordances in this learning landscape, that students have flexibility and agency of their time, pace, and place. In a concurrent classroom, instructional models that help us leverage the affordances of both of these learning landscapes will be most successful. For example, in the station rotation model, students would have opportunities for strategic human interaction in small groups in one station an opportunity for self-paced work in another station. Let's consider instructional strategies and models. We should be incorporating both synchronous and asynchronous learning experiences, as well as providing both online and offline learning experiences. Even though we are doing a considerable amount of distance learning, we can provide offline learning opportunities in which students engage with actual books as well as paper and pencil activities. We know that whole group teaching is not very effective and the challenges are more evident than ever in our current situation. In my opinion, we should look for ways to incorporate more small group instruction. When we think about specific instructional models, teachers often focus on how this will affect student learning which of course is very important, but we should also consider whether or not the instructional model is sustainable for teachers. This year, more than ever, teachers are exhausted, but really teachers have always worked hard, even pre-pandemic. If we want to continue being passionate about our work and avoid burnout, our evaluation of instructional models should include an honest assessment of how sustainable the model is for teachers. You've probably heard of the flipped classroom where students watch a video in, where the in which the teacher presents the main content of the lesson. 
students watch at home or at one station in a station rotation model. The current iteration of this model usually includes a pre-video activity and a post-video activity. Make sure to check out the resources linked in the video description. In a playlist model, students work on an individual list of activities, usually alone, but sometimes in strategic pairs. The playlist can, model can be used for the entire class simultaneously, or it can be one station of a station rotation model and can be spread out over several sessions. Choice boards and choose your own adventure are similar. You create the board using a Google Doc or a Google Slides presentation. Students work independently or in strategic pairs to complete a number of tasks of their choosing. Station rotation is a model primary teachers have used in their classrooms um, for a long time, but it is effective for all grade levels and can be adapted to distance learning and the concurrent classroom. Flip-flop is basically a two-station station rotation model. You divide your class in two groups. While one is working independently, the other group works with you. So what makes these instructional models sustainable? I offer three suggestions. First, they are reusable and easily modified. Second, they can be shared with co-teachers. There may be more upfront work when you first begin to use some of these models, but you can work with co-teachers to share the load. There are also many free templates and, and examples online from other teachers that you can adapt. Third, all of these models free the teacher to coach, support, and scaffold individual students in small groups. When teachers have the opportunity to regularly connect with individuals and small groups, relationships deepen. Plus, teachers can maintain a better sense of the learning that is occurring, both of which lead to greater teacher satisfaction. Let's look at a sample of these, one of these models. Gavin Tucker calls this the flip-flop model. You begin class with a welcome task for all learners. Regardless of how you are interacting with students in a traditional classroom, all online in Zoom, or with some in class and some online, a welcome task allows students to begin learning immediately. While students work on the welcome task, the teacher is free to help students that may be experiencing difficulty with technology or have other needs. Students are divided into two groups. Group A will work with the teacher while Group B does independent work. The teacher provides clear instructions to all students about what they are to do during independent work. You may want to record a video with the instructions so students can review it once they start their independent work. When you think about how to divide students, be strategic. Do you want an opportunity to work with online students separately from in-class students? Do you want to pair online students with in-class students to do independent work together? The teacher then does a mini lesson with group A while group B works independently, and then they flip-flop. At the end, all learners do an exit ticket, which provides the teacher with a formative assessment of the content covered in this session. This is an example of the independent activities I created when teaching this session live. You can provide a similar list that allows students complete choice and provides options for a variety of modalities, or you can provide very specific tasks for your students to complete. This is an example of welcome tasks that can be used with students. Make sure to check out the link in the video description that has all the resources. Adding one new instructional model to your teaching arsenal can have big impact, and this is your exit ticket. Repeating an instructional model that works is a great idea. Students love the familiarity and the teacher can vary the content within the same structure. Thanks for watching and here's hoping next year is better.